Here now with more on the future of technology, NBC's Tom Costello. The year is 2017. You're rushed to a hospital, unconscious with no ID or medical history, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, but thanks to a microchip under your skin, but thanks to a microchip under your skin. Science fiction 20 years ago, but a biometric reality today. The technology is based on answering one simple question. Am I who I say I am? Already, fingerprints and iris scans verify passenger identities at airports. Within 10 years, that technology may be even more widespread. And look for more complex facial recognition programs that scan a crowd of thousands looking for a single terrorist. Today's facial recognition software starts with the eyes, then it maps out the contours of the face and compares that against a database of millions, a database that's growing by the day. What's next? At the University of Bath in England, researchers predict big changes for consumers. Humans injected with a tiny chip holding the key to all of their private information. But as you're about to see in our CBS 46 investigation, it's not fiction. In fact, it's being marketed in Georgia as life-saving technology. So why do some experts say it's potentially deadly? CBS 46's Kim Fedek investigates. It's used in key cards, prepaid tolls, even checked luggage. It's called RFID technology, or radio frequency identification. Small chips that store information. So, here's the chip. And now that same technology is literally available in the flesh, with chips injected right into people's arms. It says it burns a little bit. That's about it. Atlanta firefighter John Santola was injected with the chip about the size of a grain of rice. When scanned, the number on the chip is linked to a database with Santola's medical history. I had to go help me uh, in case of emergency. Santola was chipped when Florida-based Verichip Corporation set up a booth at an Atlanta firefighter conference. They market the chip primarily for safety reasons, storing medical information for first responders, Alzheimer's patients, even children. And it is the only product that has been approved by the FDA for this specific purpose. The FDA approved the use of chips in humans in 2004, but since then it's caused quite a bit of controversy with some consumer groups, concerned about privacy, even health concerns. These are very powerful tools, especially if they fall in the hands of a, uh, somebody with political ambitions. One of the loudest voices of opposition is right here in the Boston area, a Harvard doctor and author of spy chips. These technologies will not make us safer. I think they'll make us sitting ducks for Big Brother. Dr. Katherine Albrecht also compiled 16 years of studies she says prove the chip can cause cancerous tumors. It's clear as day that these tumors were not only malignant, but they metastasized, they spread to the lungs, the liver, the thymus, the, the, the brain. These pictures show the tumors growing around the actual chip in the mice and rats. Certainly the company, I mean, they, they've done, I think, a, 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 a tremendous job of keeping that information under wraps for the last several years. We sat down with the chief medical officer of Verichip and asked about the link to cancer in mice. 
Yeah, I, I am not aware. I mean, I would have to take a look at uh, what, what's, being, uh, what's out there right now. I'm not aware of any, any issues at this point. But weeks later, Verichip sent 26 pages of literature, claiming the incidence of microchip-associated sarcoma in rodents is very low, and claims the mice in at least one of those studies were genetically engineered to be tumor-prone. No doubt in your mind that this is safe for us medically. Yes, I mean from everything that I've seen, um, I, it, it's, it's very superficial. It's been in the animals for 20 plus years. John Sintola won't need to worry about the cancer debate. His chip fell out after two days. Would you get it again? I would not get it again. While most of the U.S. was asleep in the early morning hours of October 8, 2014, the second blood moon of an extraordinary series of lunar eclipses dominated the sky. We are now in the middle phase of this current tetrad, or four consecutive blood moons. According to NASA, over the past 5,000 years, on average, there's one total lunar eclipse every one and a half years. The current tetrad is rare, number 62 in the past 2,000 years, and there will not be any more in the 21st century. But there is something at work here that makes this group of blood moons very rare. Only seven times since the time of Christ have all four blood moons of a tetrad all fallen on Jewish holy days. We are now in the middle of the eighth biblical tetrad, and there will not be another biblical tetrad for almost 600 years. And there shall be signs in the sun and in the moon and in the stars, and upon the earth distress of nations with perplexity, the sea and the waves roaring, men's hearts failing them for fear and for looking after those things which are coming on the earth, for the powers of heaven shall be shaken. This also is about the rise and fall of nations. The Shemitah gives the key about when ri nations rise and fall it has to do with America. Let me give you an example how, it, how this mystery is so big, it's affected everything. Uh, Shemitah, it actually can be taken as, I said, shaking or falling or collapsing. 1917, you have, you have the year of the Shemitah. You have a collapse on Wall Street, but you also have a shaking of the nations called the First World War. The Shemitah is about collapsing. That, in that war, you have the collapse of powers, collapse of four empires, the German Empire, the Hungarian, the Russian, the Ottoman, all collapse in, in the year linked to the Shemitah. And you also have, it's linked to, the Shemitah is linked to the rise of nations. 1917 is the year that begins America's rise of world power on the stage. It enters world, the, the First World War. This is considered that. And so you have the beginning of this rise. But if you take it uh, four Shemitahs later, which is 28 years, interesting, four in the Bible is a number of kingdoms. It takes you to 1945, and you have another global cataclysm. You have the shaking of the world, shaking uh, World War II coming. You have, you have literally, actually, you know, Hitler's uh, attacks began in 1938. That was the year of the Shemitah. Goes seven years till 1945 until it's over. Saint Shemitah. The Holocaust, begin, Kristallnacht, it's, it's noted as 1938 as the fateful year. Year of the Shemitah. Ends 1945, year of the Shemitah. It, you, when you reach the peak of, of, the, war, of the Shemitah, you, you also get the peak of World War II, summer of 1945. You're approaching the Shemitah's day of nullifying things. Well, this is the day of wiping out. Uh, unleashed on the world is the greatest power of wiping out ever. Atom, the atomic uh, nu uh, nuclear warfare comes on at the end of World It's like this crescendo. The war ends in the last week of the Shemitah, this whole seven-year period. And when, the, and actually in Berlin, the Allies have a victory parade. It's on the day of the end of the Shemitah. I mean, so world history, this, this launches America as the superpower of the world, even the Cold War, in the year of the Shemitah. Now, now if you go, you go one more period, you go four Shemitahs later, 28 years, 
Shemitah can mean also the fall of a nation. It gets you to 1973, key point. 1973, America decides to legalize the killing of unborn children. Same sin ancient Israel was judged for. And that same year also is the year America loses its first war. Vietnam collapses. On the same day, August 15th, that America won the war before in the other Shemitah. And so you have this thing of the fall of the fall now. And in the same year of that fall, you have the World Trade Center, which marks the same years that America America legalized the killing of its children. Huh. So, 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 so. Oh, okay, now with the amazing precision we've just seen in the past, what does that tell us about now and the future? The Shemitah begins September 25th. I can remember it's my happens to be my birthday, so it's easy. <laughs> September 25th, and then it goes till September 13th, 2015. Now, let me tell you. Now, a few things. One is two cautions. God does not have to do anything. It doesn't have, necessarily have to happen every time. However, other caution is he can. And the thing is that that's the dangerous thing because when you combine this all together, where America's going, when you combine the harbingers appearing and continuing, when you combine the Shemitah, that's, that's the thing. The thing is this. In the last two Shemitahs, this is 2001, 2000, and 2001, and then it's Seven 2007 years. and 8. Yeah. You had it, it, the mystery is getting more and more precise and intense. It's a buildup because uh, in 2001 you have the greatest stock market collapse in wor in history happens on the exact exact day appointed in the Bible, a Luke 29, to wipe out the financial accounts. T seven years later, 2008, you have the other greatest crash in American history, bigger, and it happens on the exact same day appointed in the Bible. The two greatest crashes happen exactly seven Hebrew years apart, down to the days, the hours, to the seconds. So the mystery is getting more intense. Hey, you know, I, he's going so fast, yeah. I, want, I want you to catch. It is so precise what he's saying. It's the year, the day, mm -hmm. the second. I mean... Yeah. What an awesome God we serve! <laughs> yeah, and the thing is, what this indicates, Sid, is this, there's an intensifying that means that the nation, we are progressing towards judgment. And that's exactly what's happening. It's in America. So, now, again, God doesn't have to do anything when we say, but I'd be aware. All you, right, tell me the exact date it starts and it ends. September 25th, and, and that's the start. Of this and, year. And usually, again, at the beginning, it's not, and it's not necessarily so noticeable, but if something is chosen for this year, then it's usually as it gets, it builds up to its peak, that's usually when things happen. Okay, which is September 13th of 2015. Now, there's also, you know, we've talked about this before, go, happens to be with the blood moon period as well. You know, mm -hmm. because, because the blood moon period is a year and a half. Well, we're in that half part, but the year that what's left is totally Shemitah. So it's all happening at the same time as Shemitah. It's and like a convergence of warnings. It seems. And, and, the, and the other thing is that, here's another thing, Sid. In, in the Bible, one of the signs of judgment is the darkening of the sun. Now, we're not saying every eclipse is. However, there's something there. Here's the thing. Get this. When that big, that peak day comes, Elul 29, it's going to be a solar eclipse on marking that day, the great day of nullification that at the end of the Shemitah is going to be a solar eclipse the same day. When that, we talked about the tower, putting this all together. When that tower, when they, they just recently put the spire to make it the tallest in America, the day they put it up was another solar eclipse. And you know, when the last time, Sid, when a solar eclipse happened on Elul 29, it was 1987, you had the greatest wipeout of Wall Street in history right after that. Now to today's drama on Wall Street. If your pension or your 401k is invested in the stock market, it's a good bet you lost money today. In fact, you've probably been losing it for days. Talk about a summer sell-off. The Dow suffering its biggest point drop on Friday in four years. The Dow now down 10% since May, officially in correction territory. And someone here is saying it could drop us right back into a recession. Uh, I think about 70% of all S&P stocks have already been down more than 10% while the major indices have held up. I think this pretty much is the comeuppance, and I think this is the beginning of the move down in the indices, uh, not the end. I heard a lot of people talking about opportunity last night, and I think uh, we may be a way off. Just remember something very important that most people are not saying. We have not, and you did say earlier, we have not had a, even a correction in three years because of central bank, uh, bank intervention. So I would suggest we're way overdue for something more than 10%. I suspect we're here. First of all, markets, whether it's our market or anybody else's market, are leading economic indicators. 
please, for heaven's sakes, look at the charts of the DAX. Look at the charts of the emerging markets. They look like a disaster. And they're just beginning to break down, just like the Dow did. So I'm a market observer. And the market is telling me there's a problem with the economy globally. Uh, I'm not a fundamentalist, but uh, be careful. Be careful.